your money and your time actually has huge impact, eternal impact. What you guys have got in common as well is that you're all entrepreneurs, you've all kind of run your own businesses. Um, Where's Transport and Logistics? Marcus has got a software company, um, Mike Ad Agency. Um, yeah, tell me through the pandemic, how, what's it been like business-wise? Well, how's, it, how's it affected you? What's been good? What's been bad? Um, yeah, when the initial lockdown kind of hit, it was kind of like emergency stations, kind of didn't know what was going to happen from one week to the next. Um, so we had gotten hold of the staff and just kind of said, listen, we don't know how this is all going to pan out. Um, but other than the hard lockdown, business has pretty much been as usual or better. Um, so oh, the Lord has provided quite a vanity for mm. business. Yeah. We, we started with lockdown and obviously the uncertainty of not knowing. We had a few customers who, who immediately opted to, we can't pay or can we have a reduced, can we have reduced rates because we can't trade as such. In, in retail, um, they were closed for, for car dealerships. But generally, um, we've been unaffected from a revenue point of view, but from a productivity point of view, it's been challenging for staff to adapt to work from home and you know, productivity drops and dogs bark and Zoom calls are interrupted and you, you can't expect the same from everyone. And um, that, that's been the challenge, but it's been something we've learned to adapt to and have to be more graceful towards staff when someone doesn't <laughs> arrive because, you know, I think we, we yeah. So that, that for us has been the challenge and the adjustment has been, has been good though. We become more human in our interactions. Most ad agencies got hit quite hard mm. initially. We just, they just people. It's an easy uh, one to switch off. For about three months, we were we were under pressure, and but then they bounced back. Uh, fortunately, I had some great clients. What, what are some of the broad Christian principles you've you've applied to kind of giving and generosity, and, and how have those been sort of? put to the test in a time when things are looking quite unstable. Early on in our marriage, um, I was probably more hesitant to give. Um, and I remember sitting with my wife and she was like, before you do anything, before the money goes on any debit order, we would sit and take that portion, decide the portion of what we were going to give. Um, and that would always go out first before any debits, any expenses come. And then, I mean, that doesn't stop you from giving more, but it was a, it was a benchmark to say, listen, we need to be giving this to start off with. And then as the month went and you've got extra excess, um, just continuing to, to plow back into ministry where you can. I mean, I became a Christian quite later in life, so um, I had to rethink how and, and why to give. And, and once I got my head around that, um, it was fairly challenging because of the way uh, we pay ourselves. Um, as, as Jolene and I take out um, sort of monthly, we pay tax on a, derivative, on a directive every six months. So it wasn't always cut and dried of what's yours <laughs> and what is left to pay back. Um, so we ended up doing lump sums, which was um, more challenging because it's a bigger amount at a later point and you would have planned for it. But we found that um, if we did plan for it correctly, which we have, um, we've been able to, to put aside and, and give in the lump sum and make an impact. But we do leave a bit back to be able to give from where our heart feels called. And I feel that really helps us stay in touch with giving. It doesn't become a sterile, we give this percentage every month. <clears throat> we do have a set percentage, but then we keep back to say, well, I'm moved or I've heard someone in need, I can give. You don't go, well, I've checked my box, I've given. Mm. We still have the ability to say, well, let me keep this as a, as a human touch feeling for ourselves of why I'm giving to impact the gospel. Yeah, I think as an entrepreneur, you, you're always watching the bank account, <laughs> especially I'm the guy who pays the bills in, in, in our business. And yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely a, a, a discipline and a, a, a tool God uses to check where your heart is. Even though our talent, our, our operations and all that, it's, you know, all of that is God given too. You know? And so if the pride sets in to say, oh, well, I made the money, why should I be mm. giving it um, away? Uh, then you've got to check yourself. Mm. And, and God, uh, in my experience, is very clear uh, what he lays on your heart as to mm. what to give. Uh, and, and he leaves it with you. Says this is this is what you need to do, uh, and and it's up to us to obey. The Bible goes also says like God loves a cheerful giver, <laughs> which is um, it's easier said than done. What as you as you consider your giving, I mean not just recently but over, over many years, what actually um, what's actually helped you be cheerful as you consider giving? Um, I think for me, just you know going through a really well established 
young adults group where I came to know Christ um, and then being plugged straight into children's <coughs> ministry. Just seeing how the funds get used and how the gospel is reaching children um, tangibly. You know, you're, you're in grassroots and you, you're involved in that ministry and you see uh, how, this, the, how the gospel is getting to children. So it's, I mean, it's been a great joy for, for me to be able to see how money fuels some of the ministry down in the children's ministry. For me, a joy wasn't immediate. Uh, I think to be, to be open about that, that um, it, it felt, you know, mm, we're giving and I'm, am I being wise? Should I not be setting this aside? And, you know, what if I need some more money or I haven't planned properly? But the more we got into a routine and habit of doing it consistently, uh, it became easier to be joyful about it. It was like a budgeted item that we are doing this and we're giving it. So that took the stress because it was consistent. For me, it's, it's seeing the impact, like, like Wes said, of what that money can do um, far outweighs you know, what it, it's, it's numbers on the screen <laughs> versus seeing the impact it could actually make in, in, in people's lives. What I came to realize was you know, God doesn't need us to give sure. and he, he can sort it out on his own. It's, it's, it's us giving back what he's already given us and then finding and the joy of, of being part of something that, that God's doing and that your money and your time actually has huge impact, eternal impact. Uh, and I look at the, the, the things that changed my life, those things touch me and, and, and I'm now part of that uh, is, is, is the joyful factor.